18650 batteries are used to power all sorts of different things. Everything from power tool batteries, laptop computers, portable flashlights, portable jump starters. But the question is, how good are the batteries inside those devices? We'll be testing several brands that claim they can provide three times the capacity as some more expensive batteries we'll be testing. So let's get the testing underway and see which brand is really the best. In the first test, we'll find out if the affordable Chinese brands really do provide three to four times more capacity than the more expensive competition. We'll also see how these batteries perform at colder temperature. We'll see how these batteries perform under a really high load. In the final showdown event, we'll see which battery can power up a fan the longest. At $2.75, the least expensive battery that we'll be testing is the Ultrafire, which is rated at a very impressive 9,800 milliamp hours, which is about three times the capacity as many of the other brands. With a name like Ultrafire, I'll definitely be keeping a close eye on this battery. Low discharge, no memory effect, low reoccurring operation cost, short circuit, and overcurrent protection. Shelf life around 10 years and environmentally friendly. The first battery weighs 35.36 grams. The second battery weighs 35.88 grams, which seems to be very light for such a high milliamp hour rating. At $2.99, the second least expensive battery is the LG HE4. It's only rated for 2,500 milliamp hours and 20 amps continuous. It can handle up to a 4,000 milliamp charge rate. Made in Korea. The LG weighs 45.82 grams. The second LG weighs slightly more more at 45.95 grams, so about 10 grams more than the Ultrafire. I wanted to keep an eye on the temperature of the batteries during the charge and discharge cycle, so I bought a thermometer with four probes. None of the batteries overheated during the one amp charge and discharge cycle. In the first test, all of the batteries will be charged at 1,000 milliamps, and once fully charged, I'll measure the internal resistance and then measure the capacity during the discharge cycle. The batteries are fully charged. I'll explain more about the internal resistance later in the video. The first Ultrafire had an internal resistance of 48.1. The second was 31. The LG HE did much better at 12.3 on the first cell. The second was the same at 12.3. I'll be draining the batteries at 1,000 milliamps. The Ultrafire, which is supposed to produce 9,800 milliamp hours, only produced 1,230 and 1,163, which is only 12% of its rated capacity. The LG HE4 did much better at 2,524 and the second battery at 2,524 four, slightly exceeding its 2,500 rating. At $3.25, the LG MJ1 is the third least expensive battery. It's rated for 3,500 milliamp hours and 10 amps. The LG is made in Korea. The first battery weighs 46.8 grams. The second battery also weighs 46.8 grams. At a price of $3.42, the Samsung 25R is rated for 2,500 milliamp hours and 20 amps. It's made in Korea or Malaysia. The first Samsung weighs 43.9 grams. The second battery weighs 43.92 grams. The batteries are fully charged. The LG MJ1 had an internal resistance of 27 and 27.3. The Samsung 25R did much better at 11.7 and 11.7. The 3,500 milliamp hour LG MJ1s produce 3,404 and 3,389. The 2,500 milliamp hour Samsungs produced 2,545 and 2,528. At only $3.60, the ETS Air seems like a great bargain if it can indeed produce 9,999 milliamp hours. It claims to be a high rate discharge battery, no memory effect, short circuit, overcharge and discharge protection, PCB life around 10 years. It is green, made in China. The first ETS Air weighs 35.7 grams. The second weighs 35.4 grams. Again, this seems like a very light battery for such a high milliamp hour rating. The Cast New costs $3.75 and is rated for 3,000 milliamp hours. Recharging and discharging protection circuit, low discharge rate, short circuit and overcurrent protection. Shelf life around 10 years. Environmentally friendly. Made in China. The first Cast New battery weighs 36.08 grams. The second one weighs slightly less at 35.61 grams. ETS Air had an internal resistance of 50 57.1 and 46.1. The Cast News really struggled at 71.5 and 76.3. The 9,999 milliamp hour ETS Airs really struggled only producing 1,299 and 1,298 milliamp hours, which is only 13% of its rated capacity. The Cast News, which are rated at 3,000 milliamp hours, also struggled only producing 718 and 651. The BXE costs $3.92 and is rated for 9,800 milliamp hours. No memory effect, 
low reoccurring operation cost, short circuit and overcurrent protection. Shelf life is around 10 years. Environmentally friendly. From my research, the BXE is made in China. The first BXE weighs 35.05 grams. The second BXE weighs 36.28 grams. The Samsung INR 30Q costs $4.34 and is rated for 3,000 milliamp hours and 15 amps. The Samsung is made in either Korea or Malaysia. The first battery weighs 45.77 grams. The second battery weighs 45.84. The BXC had an internal resistance of 55 and 53.1. The Samsung 30Q did much better at 11.8 and 12.1. The 9800 milliamp hour BXC produced 1,194 and 1,244 milliamp hours, which is only 12% of its rated capacity. The 3000 milliamp hour Samsung 30Q did much better at 2,985 and 3,002, which is 99.8% of its rating. The Samsung 35E cost $4.89 and is rated for 3,500 milliamp hours and 8 amps. Made in Korea. The first battery is the heaviest yet, weighing 48.79 grams. The second battery weighs slightly more at 48.94 grams. The Sony Murata VTC6 costs $5.67 and is rated for 3,000 milliamp hours and 15 amps. The Sony is made in Japan. The first battery weighs 46.65 grams. The second battery weighs nearly the same at 46.67 grams. The Samsung 35E had an internal resistance of 18.7 and 19.1. The Sony Murata VTC TC6 did even better at 11.9 and 11.6. The Samsung 35E, which is rated for 3,500 milliamp hours, produced 3,276 and 3,234 milliamp hours, and the 3,000 milliamp hour Sony VTC6 produced 2,969 and 2,961. At $6.47, the 11th most expensive battery is the Sony Murata VTC5A, which is rated for 2,500 milliamp hours and and 35 amps. The VTC 5A is made in Japan. The first battery weighs 47.9 grams. The second battery weighs nearly the same at 47.92 grams. At $7.89, the Panasonic Sanyo is the most expensive battery that we'll be testing. It's rated for 3,500 milliamp hours and 10 amps. Made in Japan. The first battery weighs 47.78 grams. The second battery weighs nearly the same at 47.76 grams. The Sony Murata VTC 5 had an internal resistance of 9.4 and 9.2, the lowest of all the cells tested. The Panasonic was at 22.2 and 21.5. The 2500 milliamp hour Sony Murata delivered 2,459 and 2,425 milliamp hours. The 3,500 milliamp Panasonic delivered 3,450 and 3,484. Comparing 18650 batteries is a lot like comparing cars. Some are designed for high efficiency, while others are designed for high performance and aren't as efficient. However, just like some car brands offer better, more reliable cars, the same holds true for 18650 batteries. When it comes to lithium batteries, the four brands on the left side of this chart, which are made in China, weigh around 10 grams or 28 to 30 percent less than the brands that are not made in China. When it comes to battery technology, less content usually means less milliamp hour capacity. When it comes to internal resistance, the lower this number, the better. A battery with low internal resistance can deliver current to meet sudden current pulses or high current demands more easily. As batteries wear out, their internal resistance increases. The Sony VTC5A, Samsung 25R, Sony VTC6, Samsung 30Q, and LG HE4 did excellent at 12 milliohms of resistance or less. Four brands with the highest internal resistance are all made in China. Beginning on the left side of the chart, the first seven brands did a terrific job, all delivering at least 97% of their rated capacity. The Samsung 35E did a respectable job at 93% of its rating. However, the four brands on the right side only produced around 12 to 22% of their rated capacity. Up next, we're going to see how these 18650s perform when they're very cold. The freezer is set at 6 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 14 degrees Celsius. The batteries were all placed in the freezer after they were fully charged for several hours before the test began. Cold temperature had very little impact on the Korean-made Samsung 25R and the LG HE4. However, the Samsung 30Q, Sony Murata VTC6, Sony Murata VTC5, Panasonic LG MJ1, and Samsung 35E all achieved very close to or over 90% of their rated capacity, showing terrific cold temperature performance. Once again, the Chinese brands delivered well below 25% of their rated capacity. While there are many factors to consider when buying 18650 batteries, including the ability to meet high drain rate applications, cost per milliamp hour is an important factor. The LJ MJ1 produced 10.5 milliamp hours per penny, which is actually pretty impressive. 
The LG HE4 did very well at 8.4, the Samsung 25R at 7.4, the Samsung 30Q at 6.9, and the Samsung 35E at 6.7. If it's all about milliamp hours per penny, the Korean-made LG and Samsung appear to be a much better value than the Japanese-made Sony Murata and Panasonic cells. While it appears that the Sony Murata VTC5 is about the same value as the Chinese brands, there's obviously a lot more to consider. The VTC5 offers a 35 amp drain capacity, the highest of all the cells tested. Chinese brands are lower quality and actually cost more per milliamp hour than most of the other brands. In the next test, we'll use a tester to apply a load to the batteries, increasing the load in one amp intervals up to, but not exceeding the current rating for each battery. I wasn't able to locate the manufacturer's specifications on four brands that were made in China, so I increased the battery load until the voltage dropped below one volt. The batteries all started out at 4.2 volts. With a 1 amp load applied, the first six brands were at 4.18 volts, the VTC5A and the Panasonic were at 4.1. The brands made in China ranged from 3.87 to 4.02. With a 2 amp load, most of the brands remained above 4 volts, but the Panasonic was at 3.95, the UltraFire at 3.8, and the remaining three brands really struggled at 3.57 to 3.62 volts. At 3 amps, the first six brands, which were all rated for at least 15 amps, did terrific at 3.9 volts or higher. The LG MJ1 and the Panasonic, both rated for 10 amps, did well at 3.87 volts. The brands made in China were quite a bit lower, ranging from 3.27 to 3.62 volts. At 4 amps, the first seven brands were at 3.87 volts or higher, while the LG MJ1 was at 3.8 volts. The UltraFire was at 3.5, ETS Air 3.27, BXC 2.82, and Cast New at 1.98. At 5 amps, the first eight brands continued to do very well with a voltage ranging from 3.62 to 3.87. The UltraFire was at 3.27 and the rest of the Chinese brands were below 3 volts. At 6 amps, voltage was at 3.57 and above for the first 8 brands. The ETS Air was at 2.59 and the rest of the Chinese brands dropped below 2 volts. At 7 amps, the first 8 brands delivered between 3.5 and 3.72 volts. At 8 amps, 7 of the 8 batteries were at 3.5 volts or more. The LG MJ1 was at 3.34. At 9 amps, 7 of the 8 batteries were at 3.42 volts or more and the LJ MJ1 was at 3.27. I didn't test the Samsung 35E at 10 amps since it's only rated for 8 amps. The 35 amp Sony Murata VTC5 really began to shine managing the 10 amp load with 3.5 volts. The LJ MJ1 which is rated for 10 amps was at 3.19 volts. Only 5 brands are rated for 15 amps or more and the Sony Murata VTC5 did the best at 3.27 volts. Only 3 brands are rated for 20 amps or more and the Sony VTC5A came out on top at 3.04 volts. In the final showdown event, we'll see which battery will power up the fan the longest. All of the batteries were fully charged before the test. The Cast New was the first to quit at 69 minutes. The ETS Air stopped at 102 minutes. The UltraFire stopped a few seconds later at 102 minutes. The BXE gave up at 104 minutes. The Sony Murata VTC5A stopped at 214. The Samsung 25R gave up at 228. The LG HE4 stopped at 242. The Sony VTC6 was the next to stall at 262. The Samsung 30Q quit at 277. The Panasonic gave up at 293 and it's down to the Samsung 35E and the very affordable LG MJ1. And the Samsung stalled out at 304. The LG MJ1 did the best at 307 minutes. The top three brands are rated for 3500 milliamp hours and the fourth and fifth place finishers are rated for 3000. The LG HE4, Samsung 25R, and Sony Murata BTC5A are rated for 2500. Unfortunately, the BXC, UltraFire, and ETS Air are rated for 9 1,800 milliamp hours or more performed very poorly as did the 3,000 milliamp hour rated cast new. When it comes to those 18650 batteries, one thing for sure is you don't necessarily get what you pay for. In fact, you're probably not getting very much at all for your money if you're buying a Chinese branded battery. So my advice is buyer beware and do some research. There are some very good batteries. Those that are made in Korea and Japan are very high quality batteries doing very good as far as meeting the manufacturer's specifications and they tend to hold up over time from my experience. All my video ideas, including this one, are from viewers. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. I read and reply to as many comments as possible. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please take care and I look forward to next time.